turn March. Detail. Oh. Present arms. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. May be seated. Let's give the JSO color guard and our solo list another round of applause.
like Bruno? There's a look. Sheriff's Office. 
Collins. He rose through the ranks as a patrolman, sergeant, lieutenant, and captain before being appointed chief by former Sheriff Jim McMillan and later director of corrections by former Sheriff Matt Glover. This appointment was significant and unique because it placed a career police officer in charge of the Department of Corrections. But as expected, his vision and ability to manage change has led to several new innovations within local corrections. Having proven to be an excellent leader and innovator of change, Sheriff Rutherford ran for and was first elected sheriff on July 1st, 2003. He was re-elected again with a sweeping mandate from the citizens on March 20th, 2007. In April of 2011, the voters of Duval County overwhelmingly returned Sheriff Rutherford to office. As sheriff, he quickly and effectively developed a 10-point plan to assure excellence in the department. He maintains the philosophy that Jacksonville deserves the right officers with the right training and the right equipment, properly deployed and skillfully managed. They must be men and women of character and sound judgment. Without further ado, we present to some and introduce to others our sheriff, Sheriff Brown. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let me tell you what he left out that I am most proud of. Well, two things. Number one, I got six grandchildren. Got to love that. But what I'm most proud of is you. Three thousand plus. Shadco members. Folks, that is a It takes a special person to say, this is my neighborhood. This is my community. I'm going to partner with the police. I'm going to get involved. You know, I tell the community all the time, I don't want your support. I tell them I don't want your support anymore. I want you involved. You see, you could all be sitting home on the couch supporting us, but you're not. You're out here tonight and you're involved. And that's what we need. So it takes a very special person to stand up in their community, to get out of that safe harbor, and get involved and challenge, challenge that bad element in your community and let them know that you're not going to tolerate that in your community. You know, I tell folks that you all are a lot like ships. You know, you're safe in the harbor. You can stay seated on your couch and be safe in your home and that would be all right. But that's, as you know, that's not what ships were built for. Ships were built to get out of the harbor. They've got work to accomplish. They've got places to go. They've got things to do. They can accomplish so much if they get out of that harbor. And that's what you all do. Day in and day out. I am most proud of the fact that when I became sheriff in 2003, we had 600 shad go members. 600, and we thought that was a lot. Today we have over 3,000. And looking out at you today, just a moment ago, our state attorney leaned over to me and she said, Sheriff, you gotta be proud of this. And I am. I am so proud of each and every one of you. Those of you who have taken a leadership role in the past, you who are taking leadership roles next year, I thank you, because that's an added responsibility. So thank you all for getting involved. And, and let me tell you, it's one thing that, you know, I mentioned earlier that we nail them, we, we trail them, nail them, and jail them, and, and that's great, but then we got to have somebody that prosecutes. You know, I've traveled all over this county telling people, look, three things that drove crime down in this community. 
And did you know, and if you don't know, you should know, crime is the lowest it's been since 1983. You realize that? And listen, it, that's the raw total crime number. It's less than it was in 1983. And you know how many people we've added to this community since 1983? Over 375,000. So per capita, you are literally twice as safe today as you were in 1991. Or 1983. Amazing, amazing reductions. Partly, that's because we added 130 some police officers. That's But when we added those officers, you know what we did? We didn't go out and just start kicking butt and taking names and putting people in jail. We went out and knocked on doors. We knocked on 77,000 doors asking people like you to get involved. And folks, they have. I can tell you one of the things I'm most proud of in this community, this community is, it does not have a don't snitch attitude. I hear the news media sometimes talking about different neighborhoods. And, you know, we just had that situation out in Brooklyn. And they stick a, a news camera in a citizen's face and ask them to comment on the, the shooting involving 11 victims. And they shut the door on them. The news media turns around and blames them for being a dumb snitch attitude. I'm like, wait a minute, that's not fair. Just because they don't want to talk to you on a camera doesn't mean they're not talking to us because we were getting tips left and right on those incidents. So they've been a little unfair with this community, particularly that Brooklyn community where crime was down 20%. The community involvement that we have had is why our crime numbers have dropped like a rock, why our clearance rates are double digits above the national average in almost every single category. And one thing that helped drive those numbers down is that community involvement. You got involved. 3,000 people working with us to affect positive change in their community. That's an amazing difference. Then third and finally, what happened? We've been putting people in jail for a long time. The problem is they were putting them out of jail as quick as we were putting them in. I used to laugh and tell people, you know, we're, we're kind of like we grew up the crime dog. We take a bite out of crime and the state attorney's office and spit it back out. Folks, I can tell you that doesn't happen anymore. I have the best crime fighting partner that you can possibly have. We're right here in Give her a Folks, let me tell you, they fear the men and women of the, of the uh, state attorney's office now because they know they're going to get prosecuted. They know that they can't get away with that stuff here in Jacksonville anymore. We're not going to process them. We're going to prosecute them. And that's why we need good judges like uh, Mark Barilla, who's running for a, for a judge's seat. We need those kind of people who understand what makes this criminal justice system work. And if we don't work it as a system, the bad guys win, folks. We have to address every single part of this system. The police, the prosecution, the courts, and corrections. And folks, if this community is not addressing all four of those in the proper way, crimes going up in our community. One of the things I'm most proud of is our Jacksonville Reentry Center. Folks, we have 1,500, think about this, 1,500 convicted felons coming back to our community every year from state prison. Think about that. 1,500. Reentry in Jacksonville used to be a getting off the Greyhound bus at Bay and Pearl with a brown paper bag. And we wondered why they failed. Why they went back to a life of crime. But not anymore. Now we work with that population. 
our Jacksonville Reentry Center, Andy Smith and Jimmy Holderfield. They've got that thing cranking over there, and we're providing wraparound services for these folks who are coming back so they won't victimize you again. Our recidivism rate has dropped from 37% to 30. That's almost a 20% drop because it's a seven point drop. That's an amazing accomplishment. Now part of the way we do that we're, we're successful is working with you, providing as much information and intelligence to you as we possibly can so that you can help us fight crime in your community. How many of you have seen our new, and I'm gonna ask Lori Ellen to put this up there. Our online crime mapping program. Anybody been on there? Good. Go on there and use that. Go to jacksheriff.org. And folks, encourage all of your friends and neighbors to do that. Because you need to go on to get the right information. Because let me tell you, there is a lot of disinformation and misinformation out there. For example, how many of you just heard that Jacksonville is tied for number one, statistically tied for number one in murder again. How many of you heard that? Channel 12 is running that right now. Four part series. Only one problem with that. They're wrong. This is the murder rates for the top 15 counties in Florida. Top murder rates. Now, I know you can't read this back there, but we are number seven in the state. Not tied for number one, we're number seven. There's a reason you use per capita numbers. If, if I was allowed to pick and choose the counties that I want to compare us to, we, we could be last. Because I'd only pick the ones that are ahead of us. <laughs> they pick and choose the counties that they want to count. They want to compare Duval with Miami-Dade. But they don't want to compare Duval with Escambi. Why not? That's why you have a per capita rate. Where you look at how many crimes per 100,000 or 1,000 per population. That's how you make comparisons of big places to little places and all the places in between. So our murder rate, we're number seven. Our total violent crime rate, here's the top 15. We are 14 in violent crime. 14. But let me say this. I'm happy about these numbers because they're going down. Our violent crime last year went down 19%, faster than most of the counties in this, in, in this state. And I've heard people say, well, crime's going down everywhere. No, it's not. No, it's not. About 30 counties, which is almost half of the state, crime went up last year, not down. So I'm happy about the numbers because they're going down. And they're the lowest they've been since 1983. Lowest murder numbers in like three decades. Or murder rate, or murder numbers. I'm happy about that. I'm happy about that, but folks, I'm not happy with that. As long as we have one murder, I'm not happy. So we have to continue to work on these numbers. I'm happy about them, but I'm not happy with them. And one way that we're going to do that is through our, our, our online crime map. To provide information to you to help keep you safe so that you can partner with us and tell us what you know about what's going on in your community. That's how this works. We want the public to have all of the right information. Because we don't want you to not only be safer, we want you to feel safer. So when you hear stories that you know, we're tied for number one again in our murder rate, that's wrong. 
our murder rate, we're number seven. Our total violent crime rate, or uh, violent crime rate, we're 14. Those are the facts. So you need to be proud of that. I want this group particularly to know and be educated about these numbers because I know two things. Number one, I know you're partly responsible for those numbers. And I want you to know that your hard work and your involvement is paying off. It's returning dividends in your community, in every community in this city. And the second thing that I know is, your neighbors look to you. They know of your relationship with the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. Many of you wear it on your shirts and on your hats and on the back of your, your jackets. They know that relationship that you have with JSO, so they expect you to know those things. I want you to have all of that information. And I want you to share with them how they can get all that information. Tell them about jacksheriff.org. Tell them about online crime mapping. Tell them about Offender Watch so that they know where the sexual predators and offenders are living in our community. Tell them to go look at our statistics, our murder study, our violent crime studies. All, the, all those things are on that website. Also, let them know other ways that they can get involved. Not only can they be SHADCO members like you all, but they can also attend our Citizens Advisory, or I'm sorry, Citizens Advisory, listen to me. They, they can also attend our Citizens Academy. That's a great program. And any of you SHADCO members that haven't been through that ought to consider that. Our Citizens Academy. So there's several ways that, that they can get involved with us. Another one is helping right here, volunteering with groups like PAL, the Police Athletic League. Every area that we have expanded PAL into, we have seen crime go down significantly. When we moved into Mallison Park, over off of Edison, I think violent crime, probably what, 37%? 37%. 37% reduction in violent crime for a, in a one mile radius around Mallison Park. You go over there and look at Mallison Park today, it looks nothing like Mallison Park five years ago. There's actually kids playing in the park now. That's what the Police Athletic League is all about. Look, the you know, somebody, somebody told me, they said, well, I thought the Police Athletic League was where policemen got together and played sports. <laughs> no. <laughs> we help kids play sports. We're filling playgrounds, not prisons. And we want people to know about it now, the Police Athletic League. And you also need to know this, many of you that help us with your time, some of you help us with your treasure. And I can tell you, our Police Athletic League it's a 501c3. It's a non-profit organization. It's not a city project. It's not funded by the sheriff's office. It's funded by dollars from citizens like you. And the more dollars we have, the more we're able to do. One of the things that I love is every year I get to take money from the dopers and I give it to my pound kids. I love doing that. Love doing that. But PAL needs your support. There's a lot of ways that you and your neighbors can get involved. But I want to thank all of you. Again, you know, only in America do we have a transfer of power with no bloodletting, as I mentioned earlier in the back. So we're going to transfer power today and shed no blood. So at least not that I've heard of. <laughs> but. Uh, Again, to all of you who are stepping up and taking a leadership role, thank you very much. I really appreciate you. And to all of those who have served either this past year or years in the past, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Because folks, I can tell you, this Jacksonville Sheriff's Office, your Jacksonville Sheriff's Office, 
and your state attorney's office. We can't be successful without you. So God bless you and thank you.
Chad Cutter Chair, Virginia Fredman. Oscar Shadko, the chair is John Pittman. Last but certainly not least, uh, Quebec Shadko, the chair is Bill Higginbotham.